<laughs> okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel on ThinkTech, and this is uh, ThinkTech Tech Talks. We're talking about tech. We're talking about David Watermull. We're talking about Cardax Inc. We're talking about the magical properties of astaxanthin, which is a very special compound, I guess. Huh? Absolutely. David, uh, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Great to be here. Good to see you again. Yeah. Well, you know, even I go back, oh gosh, to the early 2000s, I think. Indeed. And, uh, you taught me a lot about the technology industry and the sector at the time. We, you and I rode, rode through, uh, gee, the whole 221 episode there and the development of so many companies. And you were running Hawaii Biotech for a while. Yes, indeed. And then that evolved into Cardax Inc. Yes. It's a pharmaceutical company right here in Hawaii. And now a public company, in fact, Indeed. Cardex. It's fabulous. So can you talk about Cardex? Tell us what it is, what its commitment is, and what its geography is. <laughs> well, Cardex is a, is a Hawaii company. Uh, although we have uh, operations, uh, we have our manufacturing done in Europe. We've done work in China and in India, uh, West Coast, East Coast, etc. Kind of a virtual global company, if you will, but uh, many of our people are here in Hawaii. And uh, so Cardex, we've been dedicated to looking at finding a way to commercialize a very interesting, uh, intriguing compound called astaxanthin. Yeah, astaxanthin, what is that exactly? So astaxanthin is a, is a compound that makes salmon pink and lobster red. We probably all know it as that. Yeah. But most importantly, astaxanthin is a safe, exceptionally safe, anti-inflammatory. We now know that inflammation plays a very significant role in all kinds of situations, uh, in, in disease applications, et cetera. And to find a safe anti-inflammatory has kind of been the holy grail of the pharmaceutical research for many years. Why? Why is inflammation important and why is an anti-inflammatory important? Inflammation, as it turns out now, is the driving underlying molecular force behind most chronic diseases and even probably aging itself. And so to find and to look for, which is what we've been doing and I think we have found, an anti-inflammatory that you can take, uh, it's safe to take every day, uh, then you have something that I think makes a lot of sense for looking at improving your inflammatory health as we, as yeah. we call it. So what is inflammation and what is an anti-inflammatory on a molecular level, on a cellular level? So inflammation uh, at a, on a cellular level sets off pathways that can cause damage. Now, some inflammation in some cases is good. It can help us heal and help us fight infections, but when it's run amok or when it is chronic, uh, it can cause uh, significant issues for our health. Why, why would it be run amok? It's a natural body defense, isn't it? Uh, inflammation is a way for the body to deal with certain threats, uh, physical threats and chemical threats. Um, so what happens to make it run amok? And uh, I guess to get even before the axithantum, um, you know, discussion, um, what, what can I do or not do to uh, avoid my body, my, my, my system, um, having inflammation run amok? Well, inflammation uh, is a natural process, and for many of us, actually, having inflammation that's chronic, that's not in the best interest of our health, it, it's very common. In fact, most of us have issues like that. And so, uh, it actually, inflammation as we age is something that evolution didn't have to deal with, because most of us, sure, in, we, we, we didn't live. We didn't live that long. We yeah. didn't live that long. We got killed by our lion or maybe our neighbor, <laughs> you know, in, in, in most cases. Uh, so, uh, we, 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 had to, we didn't have to deal with the issues of inflammation um, uh, evolutionarily. But now, uh, we have that issue. And so, if we can improve our inflammatory health, we can improve our overall health, our longevity, uh, and, and our freedom from some of the maladies that are out there today yeah. uh, through looking at improving our inflammatory health. Yeah, and our inflammatory health covers a lot. It covers a lot of possible diseases and conditions um, and risks. I mean, maybe we even know all the risks involved in inflammation, because inflammation we know is not good for you. And therefore, we want to, now short of uh, uh, axithantin, uh, were there other ways people dealt with in, uh, in inflammation? Other, you know, predecessor infl anti-inflammatories? Well, there are many anti-inflammatories on the market today. Uh, some of the most common and well understood are things like aspirin, Advil, uh, Leave, 
even the more potent anti-inflammatories like prednisone, prednisolone, right. and, steroids. And, and the steroids, which have significant side effects, and even the, the three largest selling drugs in the world today, Humira, Enbrel, and Remicade, that treat rheumatoid arthritis and other severe inflammatory disease are anti-inflammatories as well. So inflammation is well understood by many to be to play a major role in all of these uh, situations. Now where does astaxanthin come from? Is it a natural organic thing? Um, do you have to make it? you have to build it in a laboratory? Where, where did it emerge from? How was it discovered? Well, astaxanthin, as we know for a long time, makes salmon pink and was, has been used in the salmon feed manufacturing uh, or salmon feed farming um, with chickens as well. Um, and uh, more recently, there's been uh, a way to make astaxanthin from microalgal sources, from microalgae. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what we found was that, uh, it, with Cardax, is that we wanted to find a way to produce astaxanthin at large scale, much larger scale than is practical for the microalgal producers, make it at higher degree of purity, and improve on the absorption Mm. Uh, that uh, is currently available. That's most important thing. Uh, yeah, the, the, very important thing for, uh, you know, compared to the microalgal astaxanthin. But I, we, we think that the real advantage of what we've been working on is, this, is the safety compared to the traditional anti-inflammatories. The ones you mentioned a minute ago. Yes. So are there side effects to astaxanthin? Astaxanthin has no known side effects. Uh, None. Can, they, is, you know, you, maybe someday somebody will discover something, but there's a large body of evidence around the safety of astaxanthin. There's 1,400 peer-reviewed papers, 52 human clinical trials, and astaxanthin in several forms is actually has a de designation from the FDA called GRASS, generally recognized as safe. Uh -huh. That's a that's and terrific. That's a, a very rigorous process. A lot of testing goes into that, yeah. and astaxanthin hasn't been able to achieve that. Um, both in its synthetic forms, like what we're, we're doing, and the microalgal forms as well, are is able to achieve that grass, uh, grass status. Does anybody else doing this with uh, exoxanthin? Well, to our knowledge, no one else has uh, brought to the market uh, uh, an exoxanthin that's pure, uh, that, has, uh, that is made uh, with great uh, manufacturing rigor, um, and with the uh, superior absorption that we have, that, that we have today. Uh, maybe someone will do it in the future, but as of right now, we think we're the only ones. But, but there are obviously other anti-inflammatories. Uh, there are other astaxanthin products on the market, uh, all of which come from uh, microalgal production processes. Have, have you, I know you've done a lot of research on this over years, but uh, have, have you achieved patent protection in any aspect of it? So our, um, our company has 21 issued patents. Oh. Uh, including 14 in the U.S. and seven outside the Protecting U.S. Protecting what kinds of so aspects? It, so it protects uh, things from the composition of matter for our, our second generation product, the actual structure mm -hmm. of the molecule. Um, and then also we're looking at uses of uh, both our uh, second generation and even our first generation product in certain areas uh, as, as well. So we have a pretty extensive patent portfolio. Uh, I know people have said that uh, it's hard to get patents if you're in Hawaii. No, no, you know, it can be you done. You file an application. <laughs> right. you, can, you can send it from there to here. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. So um, you said there was, there, was, there was a product before. This is the second generation. Can you talk about the transition from number one to number two? Well, the first thing that we were looking at was the microalgal. We, we, we understood that. And one of my uh, companies I was at previously, we did bring out one of the first microalgal astaxanthin uh, mm -hmm. products to the market. But as I've said before, we wanted to solve some of the commercial issues that were out there, large-scale uh, production, manufacturing rigor, purity, and absorption. And we think we've been able to do that uh, with um, our, what we now call our first generation xanthacin product, uh, which uh, has, has just come onto the market. But we do have a second generation product coming up uh, probably in the next year or so that uh, uh, will be yet an improvement uh, over okay, this so one. Okay, so this is the current product. Just, that's the current product. Xanthacin. Xanthacin. Uh, but there's going to be another one in a year that will be better. 
Yeah, it will have some. It will. Uh, it will have some additional qualities that I think will be better for some for some of the people in the market. I think some people will still prefer this one. Yeah. Uh, over time, yeah. but uh, there certainly will be some benefit uh, to this. I think that one will be more concentrated and allow people to take a higher dose yeah. per capsule. Yeah. Uh, and we think that for a lot of situations, that's going to be the right solution. Yeah. And you're finding, as we spoke before the show, that a higher dose is actually uh, tolerable and. Uh, in other words, it has no effects, and, you, and it has a better positive effect all, if you all, take it. Yeah, we, we published over uh, 50 papers, mm -hmm. and uh, a number of those were animal studies. And what we found in those animal studies, in most cases, was that the higher doses give a better effect. Mm -hmm. The higher doses do not create any additional side effects or adverse events. So given that, the higher doses seem to be the, the path to choose. How do you measure the effects? Is there a way, by way of a blood test or some sort of tissue analysis, to determine the effect in terms of inflammation? So in animals and in humans, uh, there are different ways of looking at that. One of the key ways is, some, is what we call a clinical assessment, which is if, if, if it has something to do with uh, joints, you can say whether your joints feel better or not. Uh, there's some ch subjectivity to that. Sure. But nevertheless, uh, if I or you feel better, you feel better. And so, you know, it's important. That's, a, that's an important assessment. But there are laboratory tests that can, that can be done. And you can measure inflammation in several different ways. One of the most common ways uh, in the human population is something called CRP, or C-reactive protein. And it's a, a marker of s systemic inflammation. Now been demonstrated, I think, quite uh, convincingly to be involved in cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular d disease. Now, what you can look at, what you want to do is be able to measure the change in CRP. And there are laboratory studies that do that. But in addition to CRP, there are a number of other inflammatory markers or uh, mediators uh, that are not measured routinely, but can be measured. And they can be measured in a retail, uh, I'm sorry, a research setting that uh, uh, we and others have, have done, in fact, many times. And what we see with astaxanthin is an impact on, on, on virtually all of these uh, inflammatory mediators and, and markers. Well, if you connect uh, inflammation with heart disease, then uh, one of these, uh, well, this uh, xanthacin and, and your successor drug um, will actually help um, on cardiovascular problems, no? Well, as a, as a dietary supplement, so we are uh, a... Treating it as a dietary supplement. Treating right. it as a dietary supplement, we, we don't actually mention uh, connection to a specific disease, but we think we can improve cardiovascular health. In general. In, in, in general, with, with, with this type of approach, absolutely. Because inflammation, we know, plays a significant role in cardiovascular mm -hmm. health. So it's a compound, uh, yes. Asazanthin. Yes. And uh, so, um, and you can make it. Um, uh, you can make it in the laboratory. Yeah, and and we do. Uh, yeah. We 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 took that Here approach. Here in Hawaii. Um, we, well, we we started in Hawaii. We have a large scale, uh, major uh, pharmaceutical type plant making it for us in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. in a. In a at a facility that would probably cost us several hundred million dollars sure. uh, to, to, to reproduce. And so we're not quite at the point yet where we could uh, do that in Hawaii, but a dream someday, perhaps, <laughs> uh, that, that that could be done here. There's no reason it can't be other than the amount of capital and sure. time and effort uh, and, and the people to do it. So sure. it, it could be done here. Not that we don't have to worry about the uh, uh, the uh, shipping costs, because because we already <laughs> ship all so around the world. Here. It's so small, <laughs> right? Exactly. We're going to take a short break. Okay. Uh, David Watermull, the uh, CEO of Cardax Inc., uh, talking about uh, astaxanthin and a product here in the table, xanthacin. We'll be right back to discuss it further and to see the implications for Hawaii and the pharmaceutical industry in Hawaii and the uh, supplement industry in Hawaii. We'll be right back. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch. Hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive.
everybody. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're having a good time with David. David Wadamo. He's the CEO of Cardex. Wanted to get him on the show for some. You, although you were on Think Tech before, way back when on the radio, I'm sure. Maybe more recently than that. Huh? Yes, a little bit, but still several years ago. So gl yeah, glad yeah. to be back. Yeah, glad to have you. Yeah. So um, David and uh, Cardex have been working on this uh, really interesting product, Xanthacin, right now, and it's made with astaxanthin, um, and it affects inflammation, reduces infl systemic inflammation, and who knows what kind of other inflammation. And one of the things you were talking about during the break is it has an effect on aging as a process in general for people in general. Tell us how that works, David. Well, that was very interesting data that's come out of Hawaii. Uh, for more Since the late 60s, we've had a study ongoing in Hawaii at the Kuakini Medical Center here called, uh, for shorthand, the Honolulu Heart Study. And they followed several thousand Japanese American men here. Uh, they knew what their medical records were, uh, what they got sick from, if they passed away, what they died from, and they had tissue samples. And what they discovered in that group was that there was a particular gene called FOXO3. And if you have the right version of this FOXO3 gene, the active version of it, you are three times more likely to live to be 100. Wow. And at first people thought, well, yeah, that's just Japanese, that's the Okinawans or something, it was just in that little group of people. No, it turns out to be a human-wide uh, a human wide gene, since confirmed in over 20 studies, so very strongly So the supported. Japanese, the Okinawans have no particular advantage, and everybody would benefit by having this gene if they had it. Exactly, you want this activated version of it. Yeah. Okay, if you, if you can have that. So yeah. that's some background. Now it turns out that astaxanthin tested in an animal model of aging, and we use particular types of animal models because most animals live too long. You can't wait three, four, five, ten years to see if <laughs> there's, they, no, time for there's that, no time yeah. for that. But we use uh, either uh, fruit flies or roundworms. And in this particular study, uh, in the roundworm animal model, astaxanthin extended life by 30 percent. 30 percent? Whoa. By 30 percent. And here's another really interesting part of this. They actually are able now with new genetic engineering techniques to silence or knock out the FOXO3 gene or the, the, the homolog, what we call the, the version of it in the roundworm, knocked it out. No effect, astaxanthin had no effect. So what we've done is to tie the astaxanthin impact on aging to FOXO3 in, in that model. Uh -huh. Now in recent research, just recently came out uh, with work done at the University of Hawaii with uh, Brad Wilcox and Rich Alsop. At, at Jabsom. At Jabsom. Um, we actually tested uh, our second generation astaxanthin product on the ability in mice to see if maybe, and this was a real maybe to us, we could stimulate the activity and increase the activity of the FOXO3 gene. So in essence, mimicking the best genetic lottery that some of us have won and most of us yeah. have not. Yeah. And so we tested this in mice, and I, I thought maybe a five and ten percent would be pretty interesting to see that we could improve it by that much. We saw an improvement of about ninety percent. What? What? Ninety. Ninety percent. Ninety of the activated. Uh, you you, 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 you activate it. Activate it. Ninety percent more than the control yeah. animals. Yeah. So what we have then with astaxanthin is something demonstrated already extension of life, but to have an actual impact on increasing the activation or activating the FOXO3 gene. So that, we think that's a major breakthrough in the understanding of aging. That's something that pe people can do today, right now, yeah. uh, about aging. Yeah, so it's aging, it's, uh, it's FOXO3, it's inflammation. And with that, do you think that um, we could achieve the same 30% increase in life? Well, you know, it's going to be hard to prove that because we'll never do a study no, in, in never, people never know for sure. to, 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 you know, to <laughs> see. But I think we're getting close to uh, having something. Uh, if we can demonstrate that in people, which is probably our next step in humans, that we also increase uh, FOXO3, and then I think we're, we'll really be onto uh, onto something. This would uh, be a, a world a world discovery, a global uh, uh, milestone in in, in, uh, in longevity. Yeah. I, I think I think we have we have, we have that opportunity to, to to demonstrate it. But we have a lot of the pieces already in place here, uh, and this you know essentially came out of Hawaii. 
That's fabulous. I mean, you know, it's you. You always swore that you're going to keep your company in Hawaii. You always said that, and you. I'm sure you've made compromises or sacrifices, if you will, over the years in order to stay here. And you're still here, and you're still talking about Hawaii as the center of this uh, area. Well, think about what Hawaii. Hawaii's already branded as an anti-aging center. Yeah. I mean, we have the healthy state. Healthy, I mean, that's what wellness, people wellness, wellness etc. Yeah. Now we have some very intriguing real science that I think could allow Hawaii to position itself as an anti-aging center yeah. of excellence. And that means more than just, you know, just the anti-inflammatories. It means it's an expansion of the notion of Hawaii's uh, focus on and success in wellness and uh, anti-aging. Yeah. It's taking that brand that we spent yeah. so much time to build, and I, rightly so, yeah. and adding some real science to it and putting together a package yeah. uh, of things that can really connect aging, uh, inflammation together. The, the FOXO3 gene, by the way, is a cardiovascular anti-inflammatory, maybe not surprising. And, and you could put these together with also something else we're working on, an inflammatory panel mm -hmm. to look at measuring inflammation. Sure. Like you get a lipid panel today that measures uh, LDL or HDL or yeah. triglycerides. Yeah. We, will, we need something that's uh, commercially economical, that is easy to use for for physicians that doesn't exist today. You can do these tests one off today, but not as a panel easily and economically. So we're working on that as well. What do you mean a panel? What is a panel? A panel is like let's test ten or twelve things. Mm. A panel of lipids is three, four, five things, okay. and, and the same concept here. Yeah. We would we would combine them, do a test for all of these, and then you can measure the impact of a lot of. Um, uh, anti-inflammatory, anti-stress. See how they work. And, and, and see how they work. It's, it should be easy though, right? Yeah. It should, we have the good population to test right here. We have the, we understand it right here. You understand it. Japsom understand. Wilcox understands it. So the result is you could make a test that would demonstrate what I think we both believe is, 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 the, is the truth, namely that um, this will um, Give you greater longevity. Well, and, and and be able to measure in real time, take an assessment. You come into my office if I'm the physician. We're going to do an inflammatory status for you, and uh, we can see what your uh, inflammatory mediators and markers are, and treat uh, with xanthosin. But also look at things like yoga and lomi lomi and uh, <laughs> hula and exercise and diet to really look at impacting. Uh, these, uh, you know, this, uh, these inflammatory, anti-aging activities, of vectors. and you know, think about medical tourism. Sure, you know, people it's come here. In everything you've said. Yes, coming here to, to do that, local population, uh, as well. Of course, it's for you know the people in Hawaii, but it's but it's for people to come here as well to to, to do this. It's kind of like Cleveland Clinic kind of carved out a cardiovascular space. MD Anderson did a cancer. Nobody's done an anti-aging. Yeah. Space, yeah, and and yeah. and we have this this research and product. This is all done here. It's a logical place yeah. for us that, that actually will take what we've already spent so much time and effort branding in Hawaii, allow us to actually leverage that into kind of a, a new uh, Hawaii, a statewide business. Yes, absolutely. Do, 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 how do you take the test? Is it a blood test? A, yeah, you know, it, well, swab? Well, what, what? It, it, clearly a blood test would work, but uh, there's some new advances in the swab technology that may make uh, a lot of this actually just a, just a saliva test. I can see it now, like Ancestry.com, you send in a swab, so it's Inflammation.com, and you send in a swab and you find out what your reading is and you find out how well you're doing. So uh, we only have a minute left, but uh, tell me where I can get Xanthosin, uh, this bottle, which I guess it's available uh, in GNC and other stores? Yeah, so it's uh, exclusively at GNC. Uh, we're very uh, proud to be working with them. Uh, they've taken a very a proactive scientific approach to the way that they are looking at the products that they offer, and Xanthosin fits right into that. Uh, so uh, we're working with their Hawaii office, uh, Hawaii uh, stores here, I should say. Uh, there's more than, there's 29 in Hawaii. Wow. I, I didn't know there were that it's many. It's very popular, really. Yeah, it's very popular. All and, this whole thing about wellness is very popular. Indeed, and then moving on uh, from, uh, from Hawaii to the, to the mainland. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, how, by the way, these are, these are pills. These are the Xanthosin pills. We got them right here. 
and uh, you could take one or two, you could take more, it'd be okay to take what? People are taking four and they find uh, that works fine yeah. or even better? Yeah, so we're, we're finding that there's a range of dosages de de depending on the individual situation. Um, some people are fine with one capsule a day, uh, others uh, you know, find that more is better as well. And that's certainly consistent with our, the data that we and others have published uh, also. Uh, so, how many? Uh, just, just get a handle on the price. This is not expensive, huh? The, uh, the, uh, we have two uh, bottles. This one is a third, thirty count. It's twenty three ninety nine mm -hmm. at, um, yeah. a, at uh, GNC. We also have a sixty count. That's thirty nine ninety nine. So that's not expensive. This is yeah. all within the budget of the ordinary person. So l let me ask you, what's going to happen going forward, David? It's certainly, this is not the end of the game for Cardex. You've got a lot more on, on your, on your, your plan. Um, to the extent you can tell us about it. Um, what do you plan for the future? Well, Cardex? we have certainly talked about uh, an expansion of Xanthacin uh, outside Hawaii. And we have a global potential global market, and so that could, is going to play out hopefully over the next several years of time. We have a second generation product coming that's uh, even an improvement, a, a more concentrated version uh, mm -hmm. you know, of that. And so that will come behind that. And then we also have in our pipeline uh, assuming that we can find the resources to develop them, similar products, but with impact uh, on prostate inflammation, uh, prostate health, uh, and uh, in, in eye health, uh, macular health as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we'll, we have those products coming also. Wow, that's going to be exciting. I hope you'll tell me. <laughs> Because <laughs> we all get older, we need to avoid inflammation to stay healthy uh, in many ways and to stay alive for that matter. Absolutely. No. <laughs> and it's more the issue. So this has a great effect. I mean, to the extent that you can get onto the mainland, get to Europe, get, get to Asia, sell uh, exothantum in, in one generation or another of these drugs, um, these pills, uh, then you will change the way people see Hawaii. You will expand the whole wellness reputation that we have, and you will be a Hawaii company as you always wanted to be. Well, we do. I've always wanted to stay in Hawaii, and there's no reason that, that, that we can't stay in Hawaii. And I think the concept that uh, anything good has to move away, uh, hopefully we will disprove that. Uh, because uh, there's, as, as we've shown, uh, you, know, you don't have to move, uh, but you can still be a global c company. Yeah, so it's a model. And maybe, uh, you know, the dream of uh, the early 2000s that you and I had together uh, and so many other people that Hawaii becomes a tech center, even a pharmaceutical center, it can come true. And, and you need leading companies like Cardax to continue and keep on trucking and expanding and reaching additional markets. And as a result, people see Hawaii in, in, in the light we want them to see Hawaii. Absolutely. Now. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. You were there. We talked about this. Now it's happening. Yeah. Thank you so Great. much, David. Delighted David to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thank CEO you for having me. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs>